Well, good afternoon. Uh, thank you again for joining us for our Thursday Bible study. Uh, once again, we thank you for all the support you guys give us uh, to our Devoted to Him ministry. And we just thank God for what He's doing with this ministry uh, since we uh, retired from pastoring. But God keeping open, keep opening doors for us to preach and teach His Word. So, we're grateful for God, uh, grateful to God for all the opportunities that he still afford us. Uh, we will, I guess we will never, you can never retire from preaching. So we thank God for how he continue to keep his hand on us and how uh, you guys continue to support us in our ministry. Uh, it, it's really not our ministry, but it's just a ministry for the people of God. So we thank you. Hey, Sister Thomasina, thank you for being so faithful joining in with us every thursday thank you for that thank you for your support uh again we just thanking god for all that he's doing uh opening the doors for us uh to do the things we love to do and we simply love to edify the body of christ that we may grow into the disciples that god called us to be hey darling thank you also for all that you do not just for devoted to him but thank you for just for all you do for me I appreciate you. So let's get started today. I have a lot of material to cover. This will probably be a two-part series because I'm going to talk about nine ways that God, God promises to provide for us. Nine ways that God uh, promises to provide for us. Uh, I know he provides in many ways, but let me just give you a, a context scripture. It's found in Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. And it simply says, And my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day, God. We thank you for uh, just being who you are in our lives. Thank you for how you just continue to keep your hand on us how you continue to bless us, how you continue to open doors for us to serve in your kingdom. God, we, we want to just continue to grow, and we want you to definitely glow in our life, God. We uh, don't take anything for granted, God, how you continue to just bless us and that we may be a blessing to others, God. Help us to stay humble, help us to stay focused, and help us to stay committed to your cause. God, we love you and we praise you. Now, God, may the words of my mouth, meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. For you are our strength and our redeemer. And the people of God say, Amen. Amen. In, uh, our base scripture is Philippians. Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. I'll read it again. And it says, uh, And my God shall supply all your needs, according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. And we're reading out the uh, New Open Bible. That is, my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So, again, I, I, I picked out nine promises of God to provide for us, but we know that God, our God provides in so many ways. Uh, so many that it's hard to cover them all. Uh, but today, I've just chosen nine ways to cover in this particular study that study period that we're going to have together. And again, it will probably be over a two-week period. Because some days, if we was to be real, some days it's easy to feel overwhelmed, depressed, and hopeless. Am I right? Some days, the cares of the world... Uh, the situation and circumstances we find ourselves in can be overwhelming and can cause depression and, and make us feel hopeless. But but the thing about it is we have to make sure we stay focused on God's word because God's word is packed full of promises that we can cling to no matter what our needs or circumstances may be. Oh, my goodness. God's word is packed with so many promises, regardless of what we're going through, regardless of what our needs are. So often it's easy to listen to the voice of the enemy. And, and, and I know you say, well, 
No, I'm more uh, I'm more seasoned than that. But the enemy knows exactly when to come and exactly when to speak to us. And it's easy to listen to the enemies who says that there will never be a moment when we will not feel pain. The enemy thinks that we're going to always be suffering or going through or in need or uh, uh, or feeling the pain and the hurt of life. Uh, but even in the midst of that, God will provide everything that we need. Uh, listening to the enemy always leads to despair and leaves us fearful of our future. When we listen to the enemy, uh, it, 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 you know, and, and the enemy has a, 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 a sly and sneaky way to creep in when you least expect it. So, but when we need encouragement, whether we're go, whether we're facing financial problems, medical problems, emotional trials, we can know this for certain. God promises to provide for his people. God promises to provide for his people. Um, Pastor, I'm sorry for what scripture you're using. Philippians 4 and 19. Philippians 4 and 19. Now, I'm going to be using a whole lot of scriptures during this Bible study. So, um, and, and Minister Black is going to try to type them in for us. So, but when we need encouragement, uh, what, no matter what we're facing, we can always be certain that God promises to provide for his people. God's word is packed full of promises uh, that we can cling to matter, no matter what our circumstances may be. So, God's word is packed full of uh, of promises to, that we can cling to. Listen, Paul says in Philippians chapter 4, Philippians chapter 4, verse 11 through 13. Philippians chapter 4, verses 11 through 13. It said, not that I speak in regard to need, for I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. I know how to be abased and I know how to be abound. Everywhere and in all things, I have learned both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer needs. Then he said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. That's Philippians chapter 4, verse 11 through 13. What Paul is saying is that the reason he is content in whatever situation he is in is that he knows that the Lord will provide for him, no matter what he go, what he's going through, or what he's experiencing, Paul said that's where his contentment is. That he can go, he he know that God is with him and that God is for him, and regardless of what situation or circumstance he might find himself in, God will provide for him. That's the source of his contentment. Not mean that he won't feel some pain, but he know that God is there with him through every situation. So here we go. Here we go. Let's just start looking at uh, the nine ways that I have chosen. So way number one, God takes care of our physical needs. God takes care of our physical needs. God promises to provide what we need. So I base scripture again, Philippians 4 and 19, and my God shall supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So all of our needs mean all of our needs. Um, Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6, verse 31 and 32. Matthew chapter 6, verse 31 and 32. It says, Therefore, do not worry, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that knows that you need all these things. God already knows everything that we need and that we need and he make provision for all those things. You know, so often we say in the church, you know, he woke me up this morning, I had food to eat, clothes to wear, you know, shoes on my feet. God makes provisions for all those things. Yeah, I know you say, well, I I worked hard, but God provided the job. God provided the strength for the job. So God always provides uh, for our physical needs and, 
And, and that's the reason he gives us doctors and medicine. You know, some people, you know, everything, God can use everything in creation for our good. That's the reason he gives us all those things. Psalms 145, Psalms 145, verse 15 and 16. 145, Psalm 145, verse 15 and 16, it says, The eyes of all look expectantly to you, and you give them their food in due season. You open your hands and satisfy the desires of every living thing. God, you know, uh, the hand of God is always there to make provision. The hand of God is always there to make provision. And so that's the promises that he have that he will he will take care of our needs, our physical needs. Uh, so, hey, Sister Ernestine, thank you for watching. We're talking about nine ways God provides for his children. Luke, Luke chapter 12, Luke chapter 12, verse 24 through 26. I, I told you there's a lot of scriptures in this study because I, I just want to show you what the word of God says about the, how God provides our needs and how we can find that assurance. In Luke chapter 12, verse 24 through 26, it says, Consider the ravens, for they neither sow nor reap, which have neither, neither storehouse nor barn. God feeds them. Of how much more value are you to him than the birds? And of which you by worrying can do one, can, excuse me, and by which of you by worrying can add one cubit to his stature. If you then are not able to do the least, why are you anxious for the rest? In other words, why would we worry about those things when we know that God is a supplier? He's our Jehovah Jireh. He is our supplier. Uh, why do we sit around and worry? A lot of things, times what we worry about is things that we don't really need. You know, so, sometimes we're, 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 we're more anxious and worry about things that instead of just appreciating what God has already done. He said that uh, he would meet all of our needs. He didn't say he'll give us every whim and want. But a lot of times what we worry about is whims and wants. And, and not recognize that God have already met all of our needs. You know, I, I was listening to a preacher um, this morning as in my meditation time, and uh, he was talking about uh, when the widow woman was, and the prophet came to the widow woman and told her to make him a cake, and she said, "Well, look, I have just enough flour to uh, for me and my son, and we're gonna." I'm going to make us a piece of bread and we're going to eat it and we're going to die. And he kept telling her, no, uh, I want you to make me a cake and bring it to me first. And God supplied all of her needs. But he didn't, God didn't tell her that he was going to make her flour bin overflow. He simply said that every time she went to the bin, it was enough flour in there for them to feed off of. He didn't say the bin was going to be flowing over with flour. But every time she went to the bin, it was enough flour in there for her to be able to feed her and her son. And, and the, the, uh, the preacher said, you know, sometimes we have to live off the bottom of the barrel, you know, knowing that God will supply every need. Sometimes we want God to overflow it. And God simply say, I'm going to give you enough what you need every day. Every day you, you go to the vat, it's going to be flour in the vat. It's going to be oil in the vessel. So I thought that was a good analogy because sometimes we get so caught up about the abundance of material thing that the world says we have when God is meeting every need that we have day by day, day by day. It may not be in the abundance that we want it to be in, but God is supplying every need day by day. Every time we go to the well to draw, there's water. Every time we go to the refrigerator and, and open it, there's food. Every time we look under the cabinets, there's a supply. It may not be an overflow, but there's always something there that God has provided for us to, to survive. Isn't that an awesome analogy? Because sometimes we think it's in the abundance of things. When God supply us, even if he supplied little by little, he's still supplying. He's still meeting every need, every physical need. See, 
we see examples in scripture when Jesus was preaching and the crowd of people had not eaten. He multiplied five loaves of bread and two fishes and two fish, excuse me, and two fish and fed more than 5,000 people. That's in Mark chapter 6, Mark chapter 6, verse 1 through 14. And when Adam and Eve sinned and their eyes were open to their nakedness, God provided clothes for them. That's in Genesis chapter 9, verse 3. Even when we mess up, listen, even when we mess up, God still provides. Even when we mess up, God still supply, supplies. He provides. See, I believe that's one of the reasons that God does not give us an abundance all at one time. I, I, I don't know if we can handle it or not. God knows what we can handle. And he gives it us in proportions. But he never stopped providing everything we need. Even when we mess up. And God does not want to give us a blessing uh, too big for us to handle. Woo! Y'all got to get that. He, he will not give us a bit a blessing too big for us to handle. So it's about being in the right position and being in the right space with God. But God's still providing. Even if it's a, a little by little, he's still providing. He's still taking care of us. So we know that through God's word, God will provide for our physical needs. He will provide for our physical needs. Number two. Number two. He gives us rest. He gives us rest. God promises to give his people rest. Uh, Matthew, Matthew chapter 11, verse 29 through 30. Matthew chapter 11, verse 29 through 30. He said, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Yeah. And, and I'm going to explain this when we get go a little bit further. I want to I give you another scripture. Uh, but he gives us rest. In Psalms 23, the 23rd Psalm, verse 2. He makes us lie down in green pastures. He makes us to lie down in green pastures. See, we can experience this rest by placing our trust in Jesus. We can, we can have rest for our soul by placing our trust in Jesus. When we, when we take on the, the, the banner of being a disciple, of being Christ, being in Christ, we'll find that we have confidence and strength and, and we can find rest for our weary soul. No longer trying to run after the things of the world. Because you know what wears us out more than anything else? Chasing the things of the world. Chasing the things of the world. But God says, I want to give you rest. I, I want you to quit running that rat race that's wearing you out. Trying to keep up with every whim and woe that comes along. You, you're working overtime. You're not just working your regular hours. But you're working overtime trying to keep up with other people and have more things. And it still seems like it's never enough. And you, And even when you get it. You can't take time to enjoy it because you got to keep running that running that, that rat race to keep it. God says, I want to give you rest. Come unto me, all ye are laden and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. God said, I want you to I, I want to give you rest. I, I want you to know that you don't have to try to keep up with the world, but I will supply every need that you have. And I'll learn and I will teach you how to be content. In every situation and circumstance of your life, get off that that rat race. Oh, uh, you're running around in circles trying to chase something that will never satisfy you. So we experience a uh, real rest by placing our trust in Jesus. See, rest comes from giving up control of our lives and following Jesus wherever His path may lead. You know, we have to give up control. We have to die to self. And allow God to come into our life. And, and we follow. We follow him wherever that path may lead. Now he may take us through some uncomfortable situations. But he'll still be there making provisions for us. You know we used to sing a song. Well we used to not sing a song. But we used to say it. If God brought me to it he'll see me through it. 
You know, you know how we used to say those things? You know, we have to not just say it, we have to live that, that, that we're going to follow Jesus no matter where it takes me, no matter where the take, path leads me, knowing that he will provide. You know, if you, look, if you look at it like this, when you're giving up control of your lives and following Jesus, think about going on a long car trip. How different is the experience when you are the passenger in the car instead of the driver? Woo! You're a passenger in the car instead of the driver. See, the, the passenger's experience is a whole lot different than the driver's. Am I right? Uh, I, I, I've been in the car and I can notice things. I can notice things as I'm riding alone that the driver can't notice because the driver is too busy concentrating on where we're headed and everything that has surrounded us. But I can also find rest. I'm not as tired when I get to the destination because I'm not driving the car. See, the passenger experiences rest when the driver does not. So if we let God drive our life, we let the God have control of our life, we will find out that we can take time to appreciate more of the beauty of creation. Create. We can appreciate more of the things that surround us. We can appreciate more of the blessings of God. Why? Because we have turned the control over to God and then we can find rest uh, for my weary soul. God not only promises rest, he commands it as well in Exodus chapter 20, verse 8 through 11. He, he commands rest, uh, that we should rest. Well, let's, let's just run to Exodus chapter 20 right quick. And I'm going to, uh, let me just go there right quick. Exodus chapter 20, verse 8 through 11. And, and let's see what it says. Exodus chapter 20, verse 8 through 11. Let me just get that right quick. Exodus chapter 20. Here we go. Exodus chapter 20, verse 8 through 11. It said, Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the, of the Lord your God. In it you shall not, you should do no work, nor your sons, nor your daughters, nor your maid, manservant, nor your maidservant, nor your cattle, nor your stranger who is within your gates. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them, and rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and keep it, and keep it hallowed it, or keep it holy. So God put, commands that we, we find a time to rest. We, we, we find a time to rest. And, that, and, 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 and he gives us plenty enough time to do all the other stuff that he, he needs us to do. But if we don't take time to rest, then we're not able to handle all the things that come our way. So God will give us rest if we give him control. Just look at it again like taking a long trip. God is the driver, and we're on a trip. We're on a journey. We're pilgrim, traveling through this barren land. We're on a journey. Why not let God control our journey so we can enjoy the blessings of God, enjoy the beauty of God, and find the rest of God? How confident it is that our God provides the rest that he expects from us, he expects of us. He provides the, the moment of rest, and he expects us to rest. He expects us to rest. I, 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 I'm a firm believer that the reason of the body of Christ is so tense and, 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 and teeters so much today is because people are worn out. People are busy. But being busy does not mean that you are doing the things that God wants you to do. Sometimes, even in the body of Christ, sometimes uh, we can't rest because we fail to share. We don't want to share the load. We don't want other people to come up to where we are. So we just keep it all to ourselves and we wear ourselves out just being busy 
when God wants to provide rest for us, God places people in the, in the body of Christ to help us bear the load. It's a matter of when we share, begin to share the load that we can find that rest. You know, uh, I, I, I think some people think that certain positions or certain ministries in the church belong strictly to them and they can't find that rest because they're not willing to share. And God placed competent people in their lives and in that ministry, but we run them off because we are tired and irritable because we have not entered into the rest of the Lord and see that God is making provision through other people to help share in that load that we can find the rest. I think it's important. It's important to us that on this journey that we find time to rest. You're no good to anybody else if you're worn out and, and, and you're tired and you're weary and you're irritable. But we got to understand God makes provisions for us to rest. And that means that he will give us people to work alongside us, to work with us, to, and that we can help, that, that we can further the ministry if we just learn to share and, and, and find that moment of rest where we won't be so irritable. Uh, I, I really believe that, and you won't hear me say this too often, when people holler about church hurt, it wasn't church that hurt you, it was people that hurt you. And and I, I, I'm a firm believer that I believe the reason a lot of people get hurt in the church is because they uh, have to deal with tired, irritated people. Woo! Tired, irritated people that refuse to share in the ministry. And, and when you're irritated, you take it out on everybody and you run your help off. I'm a firm believer that, that, that we have to quit trying to be so busy and bossy and learn how to submit to God and let God take control. Let God lead the way and we follow. Give, reuse all the avenues that God provides for us. Okay, I'm going to get off of that. I stayed on that a little bit longer than I intended to. But God will provide rest. He will provide rest and he will provide provisions for rest. He will provide the help we need to get the rest. We have to learn how to let God be in control. That's good teaching right there. We have to turn the control over to God. Number three. Number three. He provides direction. God provides direction. God guides and directs our steps so we can fulfill his great purpose for us. When we turn the control over to God, God guides and directs our steps and so we can fulfill the, the purpose he has for us. The main purpose we have with God is to glorify God, is to glorify God. Proverbs Proverbs chapter 20, Proverbs chapter 20, verse 24. A man's steps are of the Lord. How then can a man understand his own way? A man's steps are of the Lord. So how can, uh, a, how can a man understand his own way? Listen, many times we see his directions most clearly in hindsight. Sometimes we see God's direction more clearly in hindsight. Yes, we think, sometimes we think we know what's best or the best way to do things. And, and then we cry over the bumps that we hit in the road along the way. But when we look back, we realize God has positioned us through those bumps to experience something far greater. See, when you... When you follow God's path, don't mean it's going to always be smooth and easy. But God will always make provision. He will guide you and direct you and lead you through every trial and tribulation. You know, back in the day, uh, they used to sing a song in the church. Uh, coming up on the rough side of the mountain. And, and, and I used to wonder about that song. I'm coming up on the rough side of the mountain. So that, that, that lets me know now that I'm a little bit more seasoned and I've been in this thing called Christianity and Disciple 
been a disciple of God for a while, I come to understand that life not always going to be a smooth path. Yeah, there are going to be some jagged ed edges. There are going to be some rough spots to overcome. There are going to be some uh, some things that you're going to have to overcome. I, I get it now. But God will direct and guide you through every step, every trial, every tribulation, every jagged edge. God will give you direction. And it's the, those things that came only made you stronger, made you more determined. Am I right about it? If, if everything was smooth and easy, we wouldn't appreciate it so much. But I've learned more in my greatest trials. And then now that I look back on my life, I see that God had directed me through some things that brought me out of my comfortability. He brought me out of my place of, of comfortability so that I could grow and learn more of him. I could trust him more. I, I, I had more. My faith grew. My commitment grew. My, my, I, I was, became more sensitive and keen to his teaching and, and his voice. And what he's telling me. So God provides direction. And sometimes it's not an easy way. But God will make a way. Ooh. See, it, it, he, it's not always an easy way. But God will make a way. And as he gives, he provides direction. It, he strengthens us. It guides us. It, 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 again, it makes us more sensitive to the, his teaching. And make us more discerning of his spirit and his will. Make us our ear more keen to his voice. God provides direction. Thank God that he began to take me off of that course that I thought I knew the best way. And he led me through the, he's leading me, not led me. He's leading me through the course of life that he wants me to follow. And sometimes we, we have to make tough decisions and we make decisions that may not be popular to everybody around us. But we know that when God directs you and you follow him, that means that he will open up another door. He will open up another season in your life for you to grow and you to develop because he is ordering your steps. He's ordering your steps. So that, 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 that's what we have to do. We have to become uh, to, to, to be more keen and more sensitive and follow more, more committed to follow in his direction. Listen, Ephesians chapter two, Ephesians chapter two, verse 10, Ephesians chapter two, verse 10. This is what I'm talking about. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared before beforehand that we should walk in them. Let me say that again. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared, prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Man. So sometimes when you do, to walk in what God has prepared for us, we have to follow his directions. We have to follow his lead. We have to go back and turn that control over to him. And then we follow him where where he leads me, I shall follow. Because I know it's going to be to a glorious place. I, I know that there's a purpose to bring more glory to his name. When he break, break me out of my place of comfortability and lead me in a, a path that I may have not taken on my own. But if I'm following him wherever he leads me, I shall follow. But it's a place of glory. It's a place of splendor. It's a place of work. It's a place of service that where I can glorify God because he's already prepared it for me before I was even brought into the world. I don't even know my capability until I turn it over to God and he shows me what I'm capable of him. That's what Paul means that I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. I can live holy. I can I can speak boldly. I can lead other people to Christ. I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. I can overcome the trials and tribulation. I can withstand the storms that want to prevent me from moving into my true purpose in God. I can. 
Why? Because God is on my side. I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. We got to quit telling ourselves that we can't and start saying that we can. Why? Because God is providing the direction. Woo! That's good stuff. God is providing the direction. And if God is directing me, I shall accomplish all that I set out to do. Where he leads me, I shall follow. Isn't that good stuff? God can. He directs us. And we can do it. Okay. Number four. Number four. He gives us grace. He gives us, God gives us grace. We know his mercies are new every day. But God gives us grace. God gives us grace when we need to get through any situation. 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8. And it says, And God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that you, always having a sufficiency in all things, may have an abundance for every good work. Mm. God's grace is there for us and he makes it abound toward us that we may have all sufficiency in all things and may have an abundance for every good work. Now that abundance is not talking about the abundance of things. That abundance is talking about abundance in ability, abundance in knowledge, abundance in stamina, stamina. Abundance in determination. Ooh, abundance of, of, of following God. That we have an abundance for every good work. We'll be able to, 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 to stay the course. We won't get weary in well-doing. Knowing that we will reap a harvest if we faint not. But we have to understand that we'll reap a harvest in due season. Okay, that we won't get tied down to the, because why? Because we we'll have the sufficiency of his grace. We have the, so and his grace is, is carried with his presence. We have the sufficiency of his grace. Why? Because we will have the presence of God to walk with us along the way. We have the spirit of God in us. Uh, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I have that stamina. I have that courage. To keep pressing on. Even when I fail, I'll be like Paul, forgetting those things behind me, but pressing forward to the mark of the high calling with his, which is in Christ Jesus. I may fail sometimes, but the, fish, the sufficiency of God's grace and his mercy will pick me up and can put me right back in the game. Isn't that great that we'll have that abundance? We'll have that all, that grace abounding toward us. That we will be be able to accomplish those things that God set us have ordained for us to do, that God has set before us. See, because God's grace is His is His undeserving favor. Is it, 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 God's grace is what allows us to forgive uh, someone who wrongs us. See, we need all these things. We need all these things to. Continue to stay the course and to accomplish the things that God wants us to accomplish. We, we need the grace of God on our lives that we can forgive people that, that have wronged us. We need the, the grace of God on our lives to put our spouse and our relationships in the right place or put them first. We need the, the grace of God to serve our families. We need the grace of God to forgive ourselves. Because some of the biggest hindrance we have in operating in the kingdom of God is not forgiving other people. It's learning to forgive ourselves. Woo! I, I threw that in there for free. It's not forgiving other people. We, we have learned to forgive ourselves. Yes, we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But thanks be to God, there is now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Am I right? What we have to learn to do is quit walking after the flesh and walk after the spirit. So we have to learn God's grace will give us that, uh, 
that leeway, that freedom to forgive ourselves. And then, and then it will give us strength uh, enough to get through day by day. Because this is a day by day walk. Thank God his mercies are new every morning. His, nurse, his mercies are new every day. So it's his grace that gives us the strength to, to keep walking day by day, regardless of what we have to uh, face, regardless of what we're going through, regardless of what yesterday holds. Tomorrow, I know if I see tomorrow, I'll be granted new mercies. Y'all got to get that. Because God's grace is, is sufficient. Remember what he told Paul? God's grace is sufficient for his power is made perfect in our weakness. What we have to, keep, have to come to understand that we can't do it in our own strength, but when we become weak, that's when God becomes strong. That's when his power shines through um, perfect. His, his strength and his power shine through perfect in our weakness. And we know it's his grace. You know, they sing a song about God's grace. We wouldn't have made it if it wasn't for God's grace. We would have never found ourselves operating in the kingdom of God without God's grace. So God provides grace. He provides those moments of grace. His grace allows us to make a mistake. His, His grace allows us to make a mistake. Isn't that great? Minister Back put 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9. Let's just go there right quick. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9, it says, And he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I would rather boast in my affirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Listen, I, there's times that 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 we go through those moments of when we are when we have those infirmities, whether it's sickness, whether it's weakness, whether it's doubt. You know, infirmities come in a lot of ways. It doesn't always mean that we're physically sick, but sometimes we're we're spiritually sick. Sometimes we're emotionally sick. Uh, and I I'm glad that I can boast of His power, even in my in, it takes pleasure in infirmities and reproach and needs and persecution and distress for Christ's sake. For when I'm weak, that's when he's strong. That's uh, that's Second Corinthians chapter 12, verse 10. Uh, I boast about his power to get me through and his grace to get me through those moments when I am weak, when in my infirmities, when I don't me measure up, when I can't, uh, when I can't come through. God always come through. He always provide those things I need. So he gives us grace. For the last one, this is the last one. And then, then we'll pick up next week. Number five, number five. He shows us how to escape temptation. He shows us how to escape temptation. God shows us how to escape temptation. God always provide a way out. When we face temptation, you know, I, I think this a lot of times uh, when we say God won't put no more on us than we can bear. Well, God doesn't tempt us anyway. He may test us, but he never tempts us. Okay. First Corinthians, first Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. It said, no temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able to bear. But with all temptation will also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. Listen, it's sort of like riding down the highway. And you know you're going down 85. And, and your exit is coming up. But yet you continue to go straight. See, God will give us an exit off our destruction ramp if we'll take it. But the good part about that, if you got a GPS system, it'll reroute you. 
Have you ever used your GPS system when you're riding and you miss your exit, but it'll tell you to take the next exit or it'll tell you to go up and take a U-turn and come back down? See, but God's precious son, it, 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 he, give, he, he speaks to us and give us a way to escape temptation the same way. He speaks to us. So he always, God always have a, a, a provision for us to overcome temptation if we just listen to his voice. Because you have to realize that Jesus, he was combated by Satan's temptation in the desert. Am I right? But he, he, but Jesus always came back with, it is written. See, when we know the word of God, we'll know how to fight temptation. We'll know how to overcome those things that try to draw us away from God. See, God promises, he promises to provide us with a way to defeat any temptation. Any temptation. He promises us. He, he will provide a way to defeat any temptation that comes our way. God knows we will face temptation. He gives us the resources we need to overcome those trials, including his word and his spirit. His word and his spirit. You know, back in the day, I used to say my conscience. My conscience spoke to me. But, uh, but let me tell you something. I can't trust my conscience. Because my conscience used to tell me, I ain't hurting nobody but myself. Your conscience will lie to you. So now I say, though, I don't listen to my conscience. I listen to the Holy Spirit. I, I let this mind in me be the mind of Christ. You know, there's a transforming of my spirit. You know, because my, my flesh will tempt me to do things. Oh, ain't nobody looking. You can get away with it. Your flesh will tempt you to do things. And it starts up here in your mind. It'll give you an idea. But you got to know God's word. You got to have the spirit of God in you to be able to tell your flesh no. You got to have a spirit of God in you because uh, to tell you that, no, that's not the way God will want you to live and that somebody's always seeing you. And if somebody not seeing you, God sees you. So God gives us a way to escape temptation. You know, uh, we used to sing a song, Yield Not to Temptation. Yield not to temptation. I don't forgot the other words. Minister Black knowing. But 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 we have to learn how to speak to our flesh, speak things to in his exit, speak though to our flesh and tell our flesh no. You know, you have to sometimes you have to uh sometimes you have to have one of those shenane moments. If you ever watch Martin, sometimes you gotta just speak to yourself and say, No, that is not of God. And and God will give you those inklings in your life. Cause if your heart is in love with God, at some point, at some point, your heart and your mind should come to maturity. Are y'all getting what I'm saying? At some point in your mind, it's at some point in your service, in your walk with God, your heart and your mind should come in an agreement and it should come to an agreement of maturity that you will not be tempted by the whims and the wiles of the devil. That's when you got to put on the full armor of God that you can stand uh, the, the wiles of the devil. Because Satan will not, will not let up Tempting you with the things of the world. The same thing that you liked when you were in the world before you came to Christ. Satan going to use it to tempt you to go to turn away from the teachings of God. What Satan does, he just dress it up a little bit different. He, he just, he just make it a look a little bit shinier, but it's the same thing. It's the same trap because he knew that you enjoyed it when you was in the world. So he, he knows that if he used that, that he more apt to get you to turn away from the teachings of God and following the will of God and following the word of God. So you, you got to understand that. Satan doesn't have nothing new. He twists, 
He'll twist the word of God so you can fall into temptation. He, and if you're not careful, he'll lead you back out. So that's the reason God, but God provides a way of escape from every temptation that the devil throws at us. What we have to do is make sure that we're still letting him be the driver. We're following his direction. And we're not, we're not everything that shine ain't gold. And just because it's good to you don't mean it's good for you. So we, we know that God will make provisions for us to overcome temptations in our life. What we have to do is respond properly to when God gives us a way of the escape. It's just like riding down 85, you got to take the exit. You got to know when to get off. If you want to reach your destination, you got to follow God and take the exit. You got to follow the GPS, not the one in your car, but God's precious son. You got to follow the Holy Spirit and he will lead you to where you need to be. Again, the devil doesn't have anything new. He just dress it up a little bit different. But when you peel the layers back, it's the same old thing. You know, people say, if it ain't one thing, it's another. I don't say that. Obviously, I say if it ain't one thing, it's the same thing. Why? Because I know the source. And when you know the source of it that coming against you, you are able to come back. Ooh, when I, and I know the things is from the, and I know the source is the devil, Satan himself, then I'm able to come back. And how? Because I submit to God. I resist the devil and he shall flee. I tell the devil, I come in the name of Jesus. Ooh, are y'all hear what I'm saying? You can't say the devil made me do it. It's time out for using that excuse the devil made me do it. I'm no longer a servant of the devil. I'm a, I'm a servant of the king. I'm a son of the king. I'm an heir and a joint heir to the throne of God. So the devil can't make, he has no authority over my life. Wow. God gives us, gives us provision to escape temptation. You got to know who you are. You got to know who you are. God knows. See, oh, I heard this too. I forgot where I heard it at. See, the thing about it is, God, the devil, well, let me get it straight. God knows the power of the, the whatever weapon the de devil sent at you. God knows the power. But one thing the devil don't understand is the power that you have in God. Woo! Y'all got to get that one. I may not say it quite right. God already knows how much strength the, the weapon that comes at you is. But the devil don't understand the power that you have in God. The authority that you have in God to trample on serpents. That's the reason we, when people say, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. But you got to go back and read the scriptures before that because it tells us that that, that we got to be established in the word of God and we got to be committed to the word of God and we got to submit to the word of God and when we submit and and, 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 and established in the word of God, then no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Why? Because the devil don't understand the power behind me. That's the reason that it tells us no temptation is common to man, that God does not give us a way of escaping them all because we have power to say no. We have a power to ward off temptation. When we, when we come to understand who we are and whose we are in God and the power we have, we have power to speak to our flesh. We have power to, to bring our flesh into submission. You know, I don't need a bracelet to say, WWJD, what would Jesus do? I mean, I've been in Christ long enough that I know what he would do. I know what the word says we, we should do. Come on and talk to me, somebody. I get tired of people saying, well, the devil been wreaking havoc in my life. Uh-uh. No, baby. 
I may be going through a rough time, but it's not the devil. And if it's the devil, God allowed him to be there. And if God allowed him to be there, then God going to make a way for me to get through it. Come on and talk to me. If we believe in the sovereignty of God, if you can believe in the sovereignty of God, if anything going on in your life, God had to allow it. And the scripture tell me that if God be for me, who can be against me? God is not going to be against himself. So even if he allow situations and circumstances to tempt me, he going to give me a way of escape from them. Y'all get what I'm saying? God, yes, he gives angels charge of us. I, I'm, getting, I'm getting happy about this. We got to understand that God provides a way for us to succeed. He provides a way for us to succeed. What we have to do, what we have to do is to make sure that we are hearing the voice of God, surrendering to the voice of God, so, and, and bringing those, those things that tempt us, that we have authority to, in, the, in the name of Jesus to speak to it and say, not today, baby. I, I, I'm greater. I, I'm greater than that. I've been delivered from that. I have victory over that. Come on and talk to me, somebody. So quit talking about the devil made me do it. And, 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 you know, yes, we have some weak moments in our life. But those weak moments should not constitute us falling into the wiles and the whims of the devil. All of us have weak moments. But when I'm weak, that's when he is strong. I have to make sure continue to remind myself that I've submitted to the will, the way, and the word of God. And he will lead us through. He will take care of us. He will provide. Okay. Time is running out today. I have a few more to give, but I'll give it next week. But God provides for us. That's I got up to five things, five ways that God provides for us. He provides for our physical need. He provides rest. He provides direction. He provides peace. God, he provides grace. And he provides a way for us to overcome temptation. Yes, we. he provides everything we need for this walk. What we have to do is stay submitted. Okay, I want to pray with you for, uh, for my time runs out. Let's pray. God, I thank you for this day. God, I thank you for your provision. God, even though I've only talked about five of them, God, you make provisions in so many ways. In so many ways, you have blessed us. In so many ways, you have kept us. In so many ways, God, you have covered us. In so many ways, you have protected us from, from the schemes of the devil, God. In so many ways, God, we can't even re name them all, God, but as we say, uh, in the church, God, you kept us from seen and unseen danger. You provided for us. God, even in, when it looked like we didn't have enough, God, you kept providing. You kept providing. God, you may not gave us abundance at one time, but you kept providing. Every time we went to the barrel, there was flour to make bread to eat. Every time we went to the refrigerator, God, Every time we got weak, God, there was uh, enough strength to get us through another minute, another hour, another day. Every time, God, when we felt like giving up, there was enough push behind us, God, that we kept pressing on and on. God, you keep providing for us. God, even in this walk, when it becomes difficult, your grace lifts us up. It girds us up, God. It encourages us to run on a little while longer. So, God, we thank you for your provisions today. God, we thank you for your hand of God that continue to be on us. God, but we thank you for the face of God that always before us. God, today we surrender it all to you. We give you complete control. We shall follow you. God, I pray that you would bless everyone that's listening to my voice. God, cover them right now, God. Meet every need that they have, God. We simply do as your word said. We cast all of our cares upon you. Because you care for us. And you are faithful enough to meet every need. And God, we thank you for that. Because you met the greatest need we have. And that was being saved through your son Jesus. And God, we're grateful for that today. 
God, just be with us, bless God, keep and protect us, and we'll forever praise you for us in Jesus' name, amen. Well, good day, have a, have a wonderful evening, and we'll see you next Thursday to finish this up.